Hey everyone, welcome back to Built In Race. I'm actually sitting in the car. We're about ready to fire this thing up, maybe go for a quick drive and head over to the dynos. I've been working on this thing a bunch throughout each of the evenings, getting all the little things dialed in, all the wiring, boost control, shift solenoid, everything works, seems to work, and we're about to go find out. So let's fire this thing up, hopefully take it for a drive. <laughs> Flopsy 10 over. He just got it finished up. Still got a few little things to do on it before LS Fest. He's going with us. He's going to be my fuel jug guy uh, just in case we run out and need it. But otherwise, let's go, uh, let's go see this thing run. All right, let's see what happens here. It made it. Stayed cool. First little drive over to the house, and then we're gonna go get some lunch. The, the blanket is super close to the ground, so we gotta get that pulled up a little bit more, and then uh, do what we can to. But um, maybe raise part just a hair. It's pretty low in the front, but I mean, dent rub, no major noises. Great, drove great. Stayed cool. Steers great. Still have the alternator belt on it for now. Yeah. So we're doing all right. So. Frick, I'm stoked. This is that was your first drive. It made it. It was amazing. Yeah. Feels so good to be back in the car. It drove great. Drives freaking no, great. No rattling, no nothing, huh? No, nothing crazy. First gear, it has like a weird whine. I don't know if it's because it's like a straight cut type deal or whatever, but um we'll double check fluid, which should have plenty in there, but we'll double check it and then we'll we'll go rip this thing a little more, and then head over to the dyno here in just a little bit after we get some food. Well guys, we actually ran to Wendy's and pulling through the stoplight it's like the trans brake almost got like turned on and like the car almost came to full stop so i had like clicking in a second driving in the parking lot check fluid everything seems good we even added a little just in case and uh but i mean it showed it second gear is super happy third gear is super happy the car drives fine except for in first and it like when i was driving it you probably heard in the video it was kind of like ooh, like it's almost like it's dragging kind of weird um but it, i was just like maybe the gear sets loud or whatever in it no carpet you know it makes more noise but second and third don't make that noise um it's almost like the trans brakes trying to apply so now if you drive it it's almost like it it kind of winds and then it and tries to like stop the car you stop you kind of clear it out apply the trans brake release it whatever it'll drive and then it tries to do it again so it's like the trans brake is almost trying to apply while driving which is really weird i've looked up We've Googled a 4,000 million things, and it seems like there's a chance that there's fluid leaking past the valve, the trans brake. I don't know. 
I'm um, waiting to hear back from the guys from TCI, so we can try to figure that out and figure out what the issue is. So hopefully we can get this thing fixed, figured out, and then hopefully then we can dyno that. But otherwise, we're going to head over and dyno AJ's truck real quick and see what it makes power-wise, and then hopefully wait for a call back or some messages and see what we can get figured out, and then uh, we'll go from there. Well, we made a few changes in the Holly, but more or less didn't pick up much. The, the middle one's kind of botched at 244.9 and 246.9. So I leaned it out just a hair and added a degree of timing and picked up two horsepower. And he revved out a little further, so it hardly did anything right there. So we know we're pretty much out of timing. He did a lot of driving around on the street with the learn. So fueling was really close when he came in. Um, not, not too bad, it had a little throttle body stick there at the end. So you've got to kind of clean that up so it's not hanging the throttle body. But otherwise, it ran pretty gosh dang decent. Well guys, Salty is back in the shop. Unfortunately, I drove it around, I unhooked the trans brakes. It feels like the trans brakes trying to drag it down, but it's, it's intermittent, it's not consistent in the issue. Let it cool, down at AJ's truck. And now we're back over here on the lift. I'm getting ready to drain some fluid out of it and uh, pull the pan and see what we see inside. Hopefully, hopefully no metal shavings. Um, and we'll just, we'll just figure it out from there. That's what it looked like from the beginning. Nice and clean. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So after a few hours of checking, looking, verifying, this is the plunger that would go in where a tr like a trains brake would originally go in when if you didn't have an internal one. Well, this spring wasn't in there. It was just this. And then we looked at this. This has over a quarter inch of playback for it. I'm like, if that still functions like a trains brake, like an external one, and this sort of slide in, it would want to act like it's applying the brake and then it could come back out or it's like just moving around. That's why it's random, it's hard to get. There's nothing actually holding this into place. Well, after asking a whole bunch of people online, Aaron again is super helpful in Turbo 400 form. Um, he said, you know, that should have a spring, but unless the valve or unless the separator plate's drilled for it or whatever, it shouldn't do anything. Well, when we pull that thing out, it did have fluid come out. So I'm thinking it is drilled and it does, could have a use. So we found, we need a spring. So what do we do? Came over here and I have an old freaking oh, this one. Oh. Oh. I have this old freaking airsoft gun, and AJ was like, you know what? That spring almost looks like that would work. So this was about twice the length. Cut it down. We made it to the right length to what the one looks like it should be. And then we're gonna put this thing in the car, throw fluid back in it, and go see another drive. I mean, all else fails, we're back to square. We pull running. it back apart tomorrow and try again. So, here is the end of that little rod. Before, it would go all the way into about here, before, like, it would just slide all the way in and then it would kind of float around. Now, it's actually got pressure Resistance. to keep it right there. So, then once we put the plug on there, it should hold it at the right distance in. And how we even came up or figured out this whole spring thing is, is if you look up that part number through cone, the one that makes the valve body for this thing. It comes with the spring. I was like, well, if it comes with spring, it probably needs spring. It should probably have a spring. Even though it might not need a spring, it should have a spring. So let's figure out if that's the problem. So it's got a spring now. We're going to go back together with it. Hey everyone, so back over about 24 hours later, we're going to pull the pan back off of it. Went for a drive, still did it. Super, super frustrated. We're supposed to leave for LS Fest in like, I don't know, 36 hours or something, if that. April's here. She's up in the car. And uh, I'm going to have her try to test the trans brake. We already got the pan off. Everything's looking okay. But I want to see, I just want to see what the trans brake does. So, um, yeah. So go ahead and ignition on. So this is in park. Go ahead and click it. Click it out of park? No, click the trans brake on the steering wheel. It's the big red button. Okay. Uh, do that one more time. Okay. Go ahead and put it in. Um, click the shifter into reverse. Click it again. Okay. Click it. Click it again. Click it again. Okay. Well, we're in the thick of it now. Valve body off, plate. Looking things over. Aaron again, a guy up in Wyoming that builds transmissions, uh, is actually messaging it back and forth some, um, trying to help me figure out what in the world is going on here. So 
Um, just been chatting with him, pulling up parts, sending pictures, trying to figure out if we can see anything. Well, the transmission's no longer there. It's there. I've talked about, I don't know, five, six different people. Nobody can figure out what the hell's going on with this thing. Something when it gets hot, maybe a clutch coming on, producing a band, whatever it is. Here again up in Wyoming, about three and a half hours from us on the phone with me till midnight last night, all morning this morning. He said, pull that thing out, bring it out, and I'll take a look at it for you. So we're ready to load this thing in the car and drive three hours north, six hour round trip, plus whatever it takes to look at this thing. Hopefully get it figured out, bring it back, put it in, and try to still leave in the morning. We may be a few hours behind schedule. We're doing everything we can to make this thing. What, what this video started out as a test drive has sure turned into quite the, quite the mess, but uh, we ain't quitting until we quit. So <laughs> all we can do is work on it and fix it and figure it out. So I've pulled the valve body off multiple times. It'll go out there. He's gonna probably pull it all apart, go through it, just put his eyes on it, see if there's anything he can figure out, any clearances that are weird, whatever causing this issue. And then hopefully we can get this thing back in tonight. So I'll keep you guys updated. Well, fast forward about six hours of driving and five hours of working on that transmission right there. We are back in the shop. It's like midnight. AJ showed back up. He went to a quick nap. He's here. We're banging this thing in. We got to leave town in like five and a half hours. So here's some parts that weren't ideal that were in there. Uh, we put a whole new little gear set. We found a crack in there and a bunch of other little things in Aaron said, you know, probably not 100% sure that that is exactly it, but there's definitely some issues, so hopefully that cures it all. So, huge, 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 huge shout out to him. I mean, I literally am back here 12 hours later or whatever it is, and uh, right at 12 hours, and he helped me get this thing pulled apart, made sure everything inside of it is really good to go. Our goal is to put this thing in, fill it up with fluid, and first thing in the morning, can fire it up, go drive it, and then load it in a trailer. So we're gonna get back to putting this thing back in. I gotta leave the camera down, but I'll update you guys here in just a little. Well, there it is, back in it. We got it, man. So a couple hours later, fluid's in it, ready to start. So I'm gonna be back in the morning, check this thing out, get some rest, and then hopefully we can head to Vegas. Oh, there's no hopefully. LS Fest bound. Yeah, either way, this car's going in the trailer and we're going that way. So, hopefully it's just a car I can take down the drag strip, not just hard park after the event. So, yeah. See you guys in a few hours. Alright, we're back up and running. We checked the little one. Now we got to load this thing in the trailer. It's raining like crazy, so I can't really get a good test drive in, but I'm just going to go around the block and see if it's making less noise in first. And hopefully we that change, so then it means it's better overall. So, here we go. All right, let's jump back in here. I didn't end up finishing anymore. We threw the car in the trailer and we headed to Vegas and I wasn't sure until we got out there whether or not it works. So stay tuned for the next video if you wanna see how everything played out. A little bit of a mess, but we ended up having a great time nonetheless. I wanna say a huge, huge shout out to Aaron Ginn of Bubba Ginn Racing Transmissions for saving our butt on this one, helping me get the transmission. He literally tore it down in front of me, put it all back together, asked not to be filmed and all that stuff so all good i appreciate his effort and his willingness to help us in in an extreme time of need so we can make it to vegas for the event so because of these issues i believe it ended up being that cracked first ring gear that on the uh, first gear set we ended up taking the 210 out putting a 205 in it so the training is slightly different but also i want to say that tci ended up taking care of the parts that were failed in the transmission pretty much from the get so uh all in all it's part of racing it's part of building cars sometimes you have issues i'm glad that we are past all of that by now and if you guys want to see how we ended up doing in vegas make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you guys in the next video